Never underestimate the fans, because without the fans, you're nothing. Of course, some franchises are so beloved, a labor of love called fan games are created. Fan games that run on Steam Deck. We're gonna start off with arguably the most famous fan game. Another Metroid 2 remake. Another Metroid 2 is arguably the most famous fan game out there. It's a total fan reimagining of the classic Game Boy game, Metroid 2. And heck, this fan game was released before the 3DS remake was even announced. Unfortunately, AM2R was officially DMCA'd by Nintendo. If you want a download link to the game, you'll want to head over to the AM2R subreddit. Thankfully, there's a native Linux flat pack. But, you will still need those original Windows files. And yes, the game runs at a crisp 60 FPS. Given AM2R's requirements are very light, you could definitely run this at low power on the Steam Deck at 60 FPS. The next fan game is a game that did work on Steam Deck, and now it doesn't. I set this up through bottles and all of a sudden the bottle shortcut stopped working for some reason, and so I tried to add it directly to Steam itself. The launcher part works, but the game itself doesn't, which kind of sucks, really. I really wanted to talk about Super Mario Bros. X2, but maybe I'll do that in a follow-up video if it works. Next up is Mega Man ZX Prequel, a fan-made prequel to the Mega Man ZX duology. It was developed and translated by Chinese group Rockman Labs. The translation quality isn't that bad, but it's got a lot of that machine-translated dialogue. As for the game itself, the game works, but the sound effects don't work on Steam Deck. And this is on Proton Experimental and Proton 7.0. Attempting to use Proton GE for this game makes the game straight up crash instead. Same deal if you try to run this through Bottles or Lutris. Honestly, the game feels really solid. The only thing really keeping me from playing this game on the Steam Deck is the broken sound effects. If I can get it working, maybe I'll do a follow-up. Should also mention the game is somewhat buggy on Windows as well. Next up is Super Smash Bros. Crusade. It's a fan-made Super Smash Bros. game. Right off the bat, I do need to talk about the fact that you have to set up your controls every single time you beat the game up. To be honest, I'm not really sure what's causing this. And also adding this directly through Steam doesn't seem to work properly. You have to set it up using Lutris or Bottles. As for setting up your controls, you can set up most of your controls properly, but when it comes to setting up your C stick, it doesn't seem to recognize my right stick. And I know for a fact that my right stick works properly, so I'm not really sure what the deal is here. Super Smash Bros. Crusade certainly feels like Melee, but without a lot of the stiffness that 95% of the roster has. You have most of your favorite Smash characters in this game right here. And then you have a bunch of other characters, like Goku. All in all, it's a pretty well-made fan game, all things considered. There's just a few issues. Most of those, I believe, stem from the fact that we're running this through Wine instead of on Windows. But that remains to be seen. Maybe one of the devs could give some insights on whether or not this is an actual issue, or perhaps it's just an issue with my setup. Either way, it's a pretty neat fan game. Give it a shot. Next up is Pokemon Uranium. For whatever reason, Pokemon Uranium is kind of laggy on the Steam Deck. This game definitely does not hit a stable 60 FPS. It's a very solid Pokemon fan game. That said, I haven't really played a Pokemon game since like 3rd gen, so I'm not really familiar with what's changed with Pokemon. Unfortunately though, the main issue I have with this game is that it doesn't really maintain a stable FPS. Even in performance mode, it likes to fluctuate between 30 and 40 FPS. And yes, even though this game was DCMA'd by Nintendo, other people have taken on the responsibility of updating this game in particular. I'm not really sure if optimization is in the stars, but I really hope that they can get to that. I mean, not that it's super duper important for a game like Pokemon, but still, I would like to have this run at like 60 FPS, or you know, a stable FPS. The next fan game on this list is Mushroom Kingdom Fusion. Mushroom Kingdom Fusion is very much a Mario game, at least on the onset. It looks like Mario, it plays like Mario, how you even play as Mario. Of course, this isn't Super Mario Bros. This is something else in its entirety. This right here is a massive, massive crossover. You know, built on the framework of a Mario game, of course. You've got more characters, more power-ups, more enemies, more levels, more world types, more level types. More bosses, more characters, more powers for different characters, more ways to fight than just in a typical Mario game. There is a lot to cover in this game. And yes, right off the bat, you can select a multitude of different characters, each with their own unique playstyles. Meaning if you select a different character, the game will change radically. 
That's pretty badass. And this right here is Street Fighter Cross Mega Man. It's a fan game of both Mega Man and Street Fighter to coincide with their 25th anniversaries. Initially it was a fan game, but then it was turned into like an official licensed fan game. Officially supported by Capcom USA, who helped fund the game to begin with. Does it work on Steam Deck? Everything but the sound effects work. It's also worth mentioning that this game's controller support is extremely janky at best, requiring you to go into a level with keyboard controls and then changing it during the level itself, which isn't ideal, so just use keyboard controls for this game, you'll be fine. And this is Sonic Robo Blast 2. It's an extremely well-made 3D Sonic fan game. It was made using a modified version of the Doom engine, like the old Doom engine from like the 90s. I wouldn't have imagined the Doom engine being used to make a Sonic fan game, but here we are. While this is a 3D Sonic game, this is more modeled after the classic Sonic physics, which is all about momentum. And of course, unlike most 3D Sonic games made by Sega, you aren't typically railroaded into one path. There are a lot of winding twists and turns, and controlling in 3D space can be a little difficult sometimes. Getting used to the game's controls and physics will take some getting used to, but let me tell you, it's really fun. It is worth mentioning that the game by default has a frame limit of 35 frames per second. This also applies to the flat pack version of the game, which is what I'm using here. But there is a modified version of this game that is available for all platforms that features uncapped frame rates, meaning you can play this at a much, much higher frame rate if so desired. And of course, here's a pair of Mega Man Zero and ZX fan games. This right here is Mega Man ZX Genesis. Both games are very, very work in progress. And unfortunately, Mega Man ZX Genesis has extremely weird feeling physics. It doesn't feel right. It could just be me, but it feels extremely floaty and also kind of slow. But given that it's in an alpha state and it's also a fan game, I can't really judge them too hard for this. And this right here is Mega Man Zero Resurrections. And this right here is modeled after the Mega Man Zero games, as you may have imagined. I'm going to level with you. I do feel a bit of input delay that I don't feel with any of the other fan games on the Steam Deck. Aside from that though, this game does feel like a Mega Man Zero game, albeit a little bit floatier. But hey, you get to fight everyone's favorite Maverick, Magma Dragoon. This is a demo of the game, so the full game isn't out yet, and I'm not sure when it'll come out, but when it comes out, I'll be sure to give it a shot. Also, the game has voice acting, but the demo only has voice acting for a couple of characters. Some characters are completely unvoiced. You know, I had a lot of fun exploring these fan games inspired by other video games, what about fan games inspired by non-video game IPs? Well, believe it or not, there's a couple of those out there that we could check out. Kyoko in particular wanted to cover a couple of these. And so here we are. This is Hollow Cure, inspired by Hollow Life. I've actually made a video about this game a while ago. So if you want to check out that video, link's in the description down below. But essentially, it's Vampire Survivors. But instead of being the JoJo Part 5 of Castlevania, you play as Hollow Live members. You start with the five members of Hollow Myth unlocked, but you can get other characters as you progress too. And while this game is very much Vampire Survivors, it's different enough to not be a straight up ripoff. And it's also like a free fan work. The next game is Grief Syndrome, a Madoka Magica fan game by Tasagari Frontier. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up in which you play as one of five characters. You go through five levels as each of the five magical girls from Madoka Magica, but there is a catch. There is permadeath in this game, especially if you take too much damage and die frequently. Once your soul limit is depleted, that character dies permanently, at least until you start a new game. That said, finding a copy of this game isn't exactly easy, as apparently, from what I understand, this game was taken down by Studio Shaft, the main animation studio behind Madoka Magica. That said, with a little bit of googling, you could probably find this very easily. And this is Konosuba, Revival of Beldia. You know, I don't actually think this is a fan game. I'm pretty sure this was actually bundled in with a Blu-ray release. Whatever the case is, this game is technically free. It looks like Mega Man. Hell, Kazuma even walks like Mega Man. Like the old 8-bit Mega Man. Like, is it actually a Mega Man fan game or is it a Konosuba fan game? Whatever the case may be, it's pretty interesting. It's also worth mentioning that this is developed by Team Ladybug, most famous for the only Toho game most people have played. As far as fan games are concerned, this is actually pretty good. But this fan game was commissioned by Kadokawa, so I'm not entirely sure if calling it a fan game is accurate or not. Not that I care or anything, but you know. 
the video. As for whether or not downloading this game is piracy, I would imagine so. I mean, you kind of had to import the Blu-ray to get this game to begin with. Not that it matters or anything, you're always a few Google searches away from finding whatever you want. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that fans love their IPs, and the most dedicated of fans will be inspired to create things based on those IPs. We also learned that there were quite a few major companies that were willing to treat their fans extremely well and give them support for their fan games. Other companies though really don't appreciate the fan love, and they'll DCMA certain fans and stop production of certain fan games as well. Of course, I'm pretty sure fan games are totally legal as long as you don't like rip assets from existing games to use in them. But again, I'm not entirely sure. That said, there are a ton of fan games for all sorts of different IPs. Unfortunately, some of them don't work properly on Steam Deck, like Project Contingency. That's a Halo fan game that doesn't want to work on Linux, no matter what I try. Of course, none of this covers the sheer magnitude of indie games out there that exist that are inspired by other bigger games out there. Games that are technically their own IP, but play very similarly to a game they may have loved in the past. Love comes in many forms, and in this case, one's love for a certain IP may manifest itself into a fan game or a game inspired by that franchise. If you wish to directly support High Tech Low Life, you should check out the link in the description below for our Patreon page. And if you like this video, you should give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well. And if you want, you can also join my Discord server. As always, links in the description down below for all of this.